C3 AI shares are surging here in overtime, up 13% after the company's earnings results beat. Joining us now exclusively to discuss is the founder, chairman, and CEO, Tom Siebel. Tom, good to see you. Big quarter for you guys, uh, especially in the federal business, which doubled year over year. Bookings up 85%. What's driving that? Uh, well, I think, John, it was a great quarter, uh, consistent with, you know, it was pretty much consistent with what we expected, just a little bit better than that. Uh, federal sales were great. State and local sales were great. And, uh, you know, the momentum behind what's going on in AI right now globally is huge. And we spent the last 15 years preparing for this market opportunity. So the world is kind of coming our way. You mentioned Gen AI. You've got 17 Gen AI pilots uh, that are happening right now. You and I talked about this when you were first starting to roll it out. I think you were sitting in London uh, somewhere and we were talking about that. You're converting some of those to production. From a revenue standpoint, from a share of wallet standpoint, what does adding Gen AI to some of these customer engagements you have do for you? Well, with a consumption-based pricing model, generative AI is huge because these language models, when they're, whether, whether we're training them, whether we're using... Um, uh, whether we're doing inference, are using massive amounts of the GPU and CPU resources. So given the consumption pricing model, uh, this uh, foretells um, kind of substantial increase in top-line growth going forward. And we're seeing, you know, the application of generative AI, just defense, intelligence, manufacturing, supply chain, professional services, law firms, uh, medical applications. I mean, this is... I mean, this is really huge. Um, just going back to the federal business for a second, with revenue up over 100% year over year, bookings up 85%, um, the breakdown, the mix between government business and commercial business, what does that look like? Is it that we're seeing government, which doesn't, I feel like, typically historically happen, but are they first adopters with the technology? I guess, how do you think about that runway versus the opportunities in commercial and what that business mix longer term is going to look like? I would say that the defense and intelligence community was really kind of slow to adopt enterprise AI going back to, say, 2012, 2013, 2014. And uh, they had, you know, 600 projects in DOD alone to attempt to build these AI platforms themselves. Well, after some years and, you know, many hundreds of millions of dollars, I expect billions of dollars invested in these projects, uh, they've now decided to adopt you know, best of breed commercial technologies to solve these problems, be it contested logistics, be it predictive maintenance, readiness, um, uh, uh, stochastic optimization of the supply chain. So the government is um, kind of really woken up and is now adopting the technologies from the private sector in a huge way so they can innovate rapidly and meet the security needs of the free world. Uh, Tom, detail here that I'm hoping you can elaborate on, and that's San Mateo uh, County, where you've got C3 AI law enforcement that they're going to be using to investigate things like retail theft. This seems like one of those real-world examples a lot of people can relate to on how AI might be deployed to make things more effective. What, what are they going to be able to do in, to adjust retail theft in San Mateo County with your software? Well, this is not only San Mateo County, it's every police department within San Mateo County, Burlington, Atherton, Palo Alto, uh, excuse me, not Palo Alto, Burlington, Atherton, uh, uh, um, uh, Daly City, South San Francisco, what have you, and they're coordinating their resources. And this enables them to really fuse the multiplicity of data sources they have, whether this is body cams, whether this is... Um, uh, uh, jail records, whether this is social media, whether this is jail visit records, whether this is criminal records, what have you, to fuse all these data together so they can rapidly uh, investigate and solve crimes. And um, we have a you know very significant retail theft problem uh, in California, and everybody knows about the crime issues in in San Francisco. Well, now, um, you know, San Francisco County, San Mateo County, Santa Clara County, Riverside County, L.A. County, goodness, even Cook County. Uh, I mean, everybody is getting kind of very serious about crime. The pendulum is swinging the other way. And we've developed a solution there 
that allows them to really accelerate um, crime investigation and solve crime um, very quickly and prevent future crimes. So this is a very exciting development. Actually, there's actually no AI involved in this application. It's a it's a it's a, a data fusion problem, but it's highly uh, efficacious.